Welcome, chosen one. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Gwent video. Sorry for uh, maybe spamming your uh, your subscriber page today, but uh, there's a lot to talk about. A lot that I want to cover before the expansion drops tomorrow, so tomorrow we can just focus on the gameplay. And I just got done uploading uh, my video talking about Portal, and the rework Portal is getting. I've uh, been having some issues with the recordings and the frame rate, and it's just not mixing well with my editing software. I have found a fix, but it requires me to spend a lot more time. So my, my video talking about uh, the new cards and my plans for the expansion will be a little bit delayed. It will come out later today, but uh, for now, I just saw the patch notes just dropped. And uh, I just opened them. I have not read them. We, of course, saw some of the more impactful changes in yesterday's dev stream. Uh, but for all we know, uh, for all I know at this point, there's also several um, smaller balancing changes. And, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm ready to get into it, so let's just do it. Way of the Witcher is almost here, and with it, a considerable amount of changes. As many of you guessed, some are centered around the Witcher tag so that already existing cards interacting well with Witchers are properly adjusted for the arrival of the new ones. Of course, aside from that, there were multiple balance changes to other cards, and you can read about them in, the deta in detail below. And with the festive season already in full swing, we also introduced the feature of gifting, so you can send goodies to your friends in Gwent and celebrate together. And uh, Aridon. <laughs> Aridon fix. Uh, gifting is nice because I've been wanting to be able to uh, gift so we can do like giveaways and uh, contests and you know once the tournament platform is better figure out we can have rewards for tournaments but uh, anyway let's get into it new packages for draft more t detailed info soon yeah because they're, they're gonna give out separate patch notes for draft but that's not really what we care about here anyway neutral Eskel, Vesemir, and Lambert, power change from 2 to 3, provisions from 8 to 8 to 7, and they now have Adrenaline 4. They talked about this yesterday, so it's not it's not news. Uh, but they're back to former glory, except you can only use them when you have 4 or less cards in your hand. I think they're still very playable. Um, they were obviously nerfed for a reason, back when they were 3 for 7s the last time. But the, the game has power crept a lot since then. And uh, 3 for 7, thinning for 2, uh, clunky mulligans. I think it's good. I think they'll be fine at this point. Um, Witcher Swarm is obviously going to be more of a prevalent archetype, a more playable one. And, you know, this does play for 9 points and put 3 Witchers on the board, thins your deck. It's all good. It's all good. Um... It's nice to see that they are applying adrenaline to older cards, just to uh, to have this extra number they can tweak. Like, if, if these cards are now still too weak, they can bump this up to adre Adrenaline 5. And, you know, so they can, you know, buff them without making them cheaper, because I think that would actually be really bad. Or more powerful, which would also be really bad. But they, they just have this extra number. I think that is great. Uh, Vesemir Mentor. Now he will boost all allied witchers on the battlefield by one. Uh, but only with Adrenaline 5 will he boost the ones in your hand and deck. And that's, I mean, that's just a straight up nerf. He's still very much playable. Uh, I still think, like, the best way to play him is to swarm witchers and then play him. Because then he doesn't, he doesn't just play for four. He plays for four plus one for each witcher you already have. So, you know, I was going to play him late anyway, as like a round one finisher that also sets up carryover. So, yes, technically slight nerf, um, but not one I think hurts the card too much. And also now he's tutorable with uh, that new alchemy that lets you draw a card with adrenaline and spawn two witchers, two witcher students. Like, it's just, it's really fitting. So I I don't mind this change at all. It's I think it's necessary. He he couldn't be as flexible as he was with all the new good witchers coming. Uh, but I'm glad you know they kept his effect, and he's keeping his provision cost because uh, you know I think some people were scared he was going to get more expensive, 
which just makes him clunkier to play and, you know... Again, Adrenaline and giving them an extra number so they don't have to nerf or buff through power and provision all the time. Because sometimes power and provision, you know, they are in the best spot they can be. Like, there's no better balance you can do there, but with Adrenaline, boom. There's something. Roach goes from 10 to 9, and Nickers from 9 to 8. Dental and Poet from 12 to 11. I mean, that's good. That's good. I mean, especially with the the, the new monster's location that, uh, you know, lets you put your biggest unit on top of your deck. Like, your biggest unit in your deck on the top of your deck. And you can Poe it to draw it. And it's good with Thrive. So, uh, that, that's a cool buff. Uh, I love this. Uh, this... I mean, I, I like this too for the same reasons, but I like Nickers less than Roach because Roach is controllable. Nickers is kind of random. I'm a big fan of Roach. I I love that it's like... It's still pretty expensive, right? Nine provisions. But like the fact that it, it can give you extra tempo, it, it makes slower decks more viable in round one because you can get that extra three points of tempo. And, you know, the, the free thinning... Is also very good so you know it's, it's been sad to see Roche be out of the meta for so long but uh, at nine provisions I do think it's a card worth playing at least for some decks and you know the same with Nickers like it's it's like it's the same card but cheaper only eight provisions for essentially the same effect except you don't know when he's coming out which is why I prefer Roche but Nickers is also very viable, and at 8 provisions, yes. Like, I I've been considering Nickers in, like, Siri Nova decks, but now I can play Roach in Siri Nova decks instead. Uh, here's uh, the portal change. I've made, like I said, a separate video just talking about portal. So I'm not going to cover that. It's, it's here if you want to read it, and you don't want to go watch that other video. But I'm not going to talk about this, because I talked about it. I talked about just this for like 16 minutes. Wagenberg now has a Siege Engine category. Wow. Coming up in the world, eh, Wagenberg? Monsters. Haunt, the provision changed from 13 to 14. Um, I like that they're taking baby steps. Um, like, th like this and just the way they spoke about it on the dev stream. You know, it, it tells me that they know. They know that scenarios uh, with the change to Bomb Heaver are now extremely powerful cards. And they are looking into them. I I appreciate the baby steps because I don't I don't want hard nerfs that ruin cards. We've seen that too many times. So what they did here, that they simply took the, the scenario that is seeing the most play. And you know, it is too much play. And they bumped it up in provisions. So I think that's a great change. Haunt. You know. The most played scenario also being amongst the cheapest. I felt kind of weird. So uh, seeing it at 14 it makes me happy. Rand Warrior now has one armor. I mean this is this is a good change. You know to, to, to make it significantly better. Than the new hybrid card. Which is. It's. You know Rand Warrior was a 4 for 5. Hybrid is a 4 for 4. Ran does boost for each unit destroyed. And hybrid only boosts once for each instance of consume. So, you know, Ran Warrior was still a lot better. You know, just to find that extra provision. But now that he also has one armor, I mean... I mean, he has one armor. Four power, one armor. And you can use order effects to instantly destroy something. You know, putting him to like six. And a bronze engine reaching or demanding six points of removal from the get-go. That's pretty good. And with some of the new consume cards, Ran Warrior is legit. And uh, I am excited to be playing it. Maybe we can bring back Fruit Loops, you know what I'm saying? That'd be great. Yeah, I love that. Uh-oh, Imlorith change. Old Spirit Tip Provision, though. Changed from 13 to 12. Obviously, great for big boys. 
Big Boy Thrive. Also, as Jason Slama mentioned, it's also a nerf to Alzer, which is great because I don't like Alzer. I don't like that he re can reward you with a free spear tip just for playing a Neuromancy, a card that everybody plays. Uh, you can still get Spirit Tip with Alzer, but now you gotta play, like, Renew. Which is a card I want people to play more. So if this encourages people to play Renew more and Aniromancy less, and I guess just Alzer in general less, and Big Boys more, that's great. That's great. Imluth changed to deploy melee, draw a card, then discard a card. If discard a card was a unit, boost self by its power. Um, how does he work now? He discards first? I think he discards first, and he can only discard units. Now he can discard special cards, but why would you ever do that? That's You'd be making a two-point play. I mean, it is more flexible, which is nice. And he now draws first, which I don't think he, he previously did. So... Oh, oh! You can now draw, like the the new, the big the big bug V, V, and just eat it. And you can, uh, oh, you can do it as a last play. Yeah, you couldn't eat, or you you couldn't do Imlorith as last play. I mean, you could. No. God, I, I forgot how he works, but now you can. You can last play him and just eat like a massive V. Maybe like 20 point V for 22 points just as a finisher. Okay, that's cool. Skalga, Brockbar Hunter, provision change from 5 to 4. That's fine, that card was not good. Uh, now it's... it's. I mean, compared to other Skellige Bronzes, it's not fantastic, but I, I think it's fine. Uncreate Blacksmith now has one armor. Yeah, sure. I mean, he, he was nerfed to five provisions a couple of months ago, so giving him one armor is fine. Other Realms. Vernon Roche, changed from 12 to 11. Uh, this is the, the spying version, uh, the disloyal one. Uh, three power. Play the top two cards of your deck. And yeah, I I think that's a cool card. It's never really seen that much play. I mean, there's been like Vernon Roche, Hengath, shenanigans. And for those reasons, I would have preferred if, if his power went down to two. But then maybe that would be too simple. But I mean, yes, it's, it's a cool card. And this will make it more playable. For sure. Lyrian Cavalry, provision change from 5 to 4. This is just, you know, now the portal is getting nerfed. Uh, not, that ca not that Cavalry was problematic with portal. I guess it technically was, like, way back when, but it's... Boost self by 1 when you play an order unit. It's not a good card. <laughs> Elven Swordmaster, provision change from 5 to 4. So now it's a 4 for 4 that can, you know, ping for 1 every turn. That's okay. If you play Elves. Dwarven Chariot now has a Siege Engine category. That does not make me want to play that card anymore. Alright, Nilfgaard. This is where the big changes are. So Coup Gras, provision change from 10 to 9. And damage dealt increase from 2 to 3. Provision change is awesome. Just a, it's, it's a clunky card. So now it's easier to include. You can now play it in Serenova Nova decks. Uh, the damage dealt a lot of the time won't matter because you're using it on a one or two strength spy. Uh, if you use it on Joaquim, you get an extra point out of it. But it also makes it significantly easier, I'd say, to use it on you know non-spying units, which is something the card can do. Uh, if, if you're able to kill something with that 3 damage, you get to replay it. It doesn't have to be disloyal if you kill it. And going up to 3 damage means that you need less previous setup. 
uh, or less established order effects to set it up. So uh, Coup de Grace, I think, is going to be quite the legit card now. Afan Hillegrand goes from nine to eight. You know, just I guess in line with Roach and Nickers. Because he's usually very leader dependent, and uh, nine provisions for that is ugh, I don't know. Brathens. This one uh, has uh, definitely hurt some feelings. So his power is back to four. His provisions are down to ten. But now he only creates and play a creates and plays a bronze disloyal unit from your starting deck. So. If you want to be able to use Mage Infiltrator, you gotta have one in your deck. You know, if you want to be able to bounce back on Emissary, uh, in case your opponent doesn't give you any targets for the others, you gotta have one in your deck. And that, I mean, that does hurt the card. It definitely hurts the card. Like, like for me, I always use him for Assimilate. But like, there will be cases where, you know, there aren't targets for uh, Informants. And he's just kind of a bricked card, but I mean, seeing as he's down to ten, like he's he's a card that you're you're more open to commit in round one when informants get targets. So I don't think it's. I mean, the card is still good. It's still a good card, and that's that's what's important. It's not more powerful. It's cheaper to put in your deck. Yes, the effect is weaker. But, I, I mean, I see a lot of decks, a lot of Nilfgaard decks include a one-off Mage Infiltrator anyway. And now they have a great reason to do so. Um, Emissary now boosts by 7. So it's uh, 6 for 4. 6 for 4 Spy. Very nice. A Seer provision change from 8 to 7. So, uh, you know, if you still want to do double portal shenanigans... Um, portal costs one less, and a seer costs one less, and maybe those two extra provisions in your deck, and also you know, Brathens cost one less. Like assimilate decks are getting buffs. Like you may look at the portal change and think it's a massive nerf, but I don't think it's an, a nerf that you know ruins all the buffs that they're also getting. Also, yes, uh, Brathens effect also nerfed, but. That's okay. Nazga Sergeant is back down to four provisions. Uh, why he ever needed to be put higher, I don't know. Like the, I think the Assimilate engines were better than him, and they stayed at four, so I don't know. Master of Disguise, power change from three to four. So if you do play him with a locked unit already on the board, He'll go up to 5 immediately, which is pretty good for a 4 provision engine, because he is 4. I think he's 4 provisions now, yes. Viper Witcher name changed the Kingslayer, we already knew this. Because he wanted to use Viper Witcher for uh, a new Nilfgaard card. Fire Scorpion now has 1 armor, okay. Don't mind if I do. Uh, I like that, I, I like Fire Scorpion. It's, it's a decent engine in, in tactics decks, and now it has one armor. Alba Armored Cavalry is now 5 strength, but no armor, instead of 4 strength, 1 armor. Why this was ever the way it was, I don't know. Why give 1 armor to just a, a deploy lock a unit type of guy? I'm not sure. But now he's just a, a 5 for 5 soldier that locks. That's good. I think that's a good effect. Oh my god. Oh my god. Imperial Enforcers now have zeal? Baby. Baby, yes. Why? I don't I yeah, I'm not gonna ask questions. Yes, thank you. Okay. I don't mind that at all. And the uh, game fixes yeah, here they are if you want to see them. That's not relevant to me at all. And uh, yes, here's more info on the gifting. Okay, so no changes to Skalliga, which they, they, they did say. 
they did not feel any need to buff Skellige. Turns out they didn't nerf it either, and you know what? That's fine. But yes, we all hate warriors, but I, th I think they're okay. I think I think we'll survive. I don't think they're oppressive anymore. They're just still strong and very boring, and I don't know why I said they didn't do anything to Skellige. <laughs> It, they did buff a couple of cards. Was that every faction then? Every faction got something? Not Syndicate. Syndicate did not get anything, but th I think they're in a good spot. I think Syndicate is in a great spot. Alright. So those were the patch notes. I mean, you know me. Like, I always want, you know, 100, 100 balance changes every patch. So, uh... It's not, it's not quite enough for my taste, but uh, I like these changes. But these are good. Now, I know there will be people who see these and be like, Oh, oh I thought you weren't buffing Skellige. You, you can't buff the most OP faction. Yeah, but how about buffing cards that don't see play in that faction? And they're small buffs. Like, come on. Like, this card was completely unplayable. And this card was just bad. But yeah, it's... It's always divisive with Nilfgaard. And that's because I think they're being really careful with Nilfgaard. Which, you know, is, is hurting the faction's playability. But I th don't think it's bad for the game. But, uh, yeah. With... Like, Coup de Grasse is better. Brathens, in some decks, will be better. In some decks, he'll be worse. I'm sorry. Uh, some of these bronzes are better. I mean, some of these already playable bronzes have been improved, so... Ooh. Nilfgaard, eh? Gonna be playing some Nilfgaard for sure. But yeah, that's uh, that's the patch notes. I hope you... Hope you're happy with what we're getting here. Uh, I... And the neutrals are, are very good changes as well. I'm a big fan of that. Like I said, I have a separate video just for Portal. If you want to watch that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed hearing my very limited thoughts. Um, I mean, it's mostly provision changes and, you know, adding or removing one armor. So, it's not much to say, but, you know, I, I told you if I approve of the change and I told you if I didn't understand it. Although I think I understood most of them. This is obviously the best change. <laughs> anyway. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, one more video coming out today. Uh, talking about uh, some of my thoughts. Some of my initial thoughts on the expansion. Now that we have all the reveals. And going over some of my favorite cards from the set. And my initial plans for decks and videos. To come in the next few days. So uh, stay excited and subscribed for that and uh yeah i hope to see you then until then though have a good one bye almost forgot to wave that would be impolite i think